Hey guys, it's Terry here from Money Matters for Everybody. And today I am joined by... Hey guys, it's Tim again. I'm just going to start saying it's Tim and Terry from Money Matters for Everybody. <laughs> that sound good? Be willing to to give up your little tiny Apple Homestead or merge it with... We got that stuff. <laughs> every, uh, every Money Matters for Everybody. All right, so today I wanted to talk to you about an article that I posted on Substack this week. Um, the article was titled... <laughs> <laughs> the consequence of teaching children about money. So I used the word consequence intentionally um, because actions have consequences. And I thought that that was a good, a good way to describe it. So anyhow, so can we talk about it? Absolutely. Awesome. I talked about how we paid our boys for toy chores, chores <laughs> for a very, from a very young age, right? So our story, I think was one of the first videos I recorded here. Um, it was probably a pretty terrible video, so maybe I shouldn't redo it, but, um, we have a goal of raising money, smart children and money, smart, unentitled children. I don't feel like I was an entitled child when I was growing up because there wasn't a lot of excess, but today we live in a world of abundance right. and our children live in a world of abundance. So therefore we want to make sure that we are raising money, smart, unentitled children. Um, so my mom, if she's watching, she can put a comment in the <laughs> chat below if she wants, uh, anonymously, of course, and she can tell us if I was an entitled child. Hopefully I'm on the right page there because, you know, earlier I was batting zero. <clears throat> How about you? Did you feel like you were entitled? I don't, I don't think I was. Um, you know, my parents always provided for us the the basics, what we needed. Uh, I had a paper route from the time I was in third grade. So um, I had a paper I, route too. Page. <laughs> So I, I always had uh, my own income you know, from an early age that I was taught to, to budget as well. Uh, I had a few more envelopes than just spend, give, and save. My save was broken out into um, quite a few different things. But Did uh, you do that? Uh, my dad told me that. Oh, that's cool. Um, but yeah, we, yeah, I mean, giving was always a part of it. And then I had uh, some that I was setting aside throughout the year for Christmas time. And then uh, the rest was, and, and other things, vacation and Christmas and whatnot. And then the rest was mine to spend. Uh, so I, I was just telling the boys last weekend when we were looking at shoes, I think, um, how every every year, like I said, my, my parents would pay for the basics or what, what we needed. So oftentimes I would start the school year with sneakers from Payless or um yeah payless was probably the main place we would go at the I beginning guess, of the school year I, I don't even know <laughs> at least not around here um but I, I would start off with they they were good shoes they were but they were they were inexpensive yeah, shoes yeah. um they were good enough to get me through the start of the school year and um, most years i would take my christmas tip money from uh my paper route and go out and buy myself either the Jordans I wanted or the Reebok pumps or uh, that's cool uh, or whatnot. That's cool. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Hmm? That's funny. All right. So we that so I would say we both fall into the, fell into the category of not entitled. Right. Hopefully, our parents, if they're watching, can correct us. But left, we want our children to feel entitled. Blessed, yes. Entitled, no. Um, and I previously talked about the entitlement behavior that TJ had exhibited uh, down in Disney World one year. And that was an eye opener for me because I thought we were doing OK. But after that, we really reined that one in. So we talked about how we pay for chores. And when we pay for chores, our kids have the opportunity to learn about money. More is caught than taught, as the great Rachel Cruz says. OK, so if, we, if they have money to work with, then then. It's easier for them to learn the principles of giving, saving, and spending. When they're spending their own hard-earned money, you quickly see them learning what is and isn't worth it. You quickly see them learning the value of money. Um, let's talk about that time in Disney when TJ showed us the value of his hard-earned money. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, it was one of our last trips to Disney World, and it was after the avatar land had opened and we would just done the avatar rides and we were walking around and they had these uh model banshees <laughs> they were and they were they were cool they were they were controlled they 
they had uh, moving heads and opening mouths and sounds and all that and, and they would perch on your shoulder and you could control everything with a, a remote in your hand and um the boys both wanted them and um i think the price was you know was 75 80 dollars or something like that mm -hmm. um and uh, at the time we were uh, vacation club members so mm -hmm. we we got a discount on merchandise and in TJ's mind, the price with the discount uh, was was what he was willing to spend. But then when we got to the register to check out, it was a product that was excluded from the uh, discounts. So he said, you know what? I was willing to pay $55, $65, whatever it was, but I'm not willing to spend $75, $85 on it. Um, so he put his back, Ryan was like, I don't care. It's cool. <laughs> well, Ryan is for your shop. I'm going to buy it anyway. Yeah. So and it was his money. Ryan was using it. It was his own money. Um, between his his own money and I think we had gone right around Christmas time, so he had gotten some Christmas money and stuff. But mm -hmm. in the end, yeah, it was all his money uh, to spend, and he he acknowledged that if he spent it there, that meant he didn't have it to spend elsewhere in the parks. So definitely. Definitely. I love that story. That's such a good story. We should write that one down for TJ for when he gets married. But so paying for tours is insurance against entitlement behavior. I absolutely believe that. Would you believe that? Absolutely. We can go anywhere with our kids and they know that if they plan on spending money, they should bring their wallet. This morning we were headed out the door to go serve. We knew after serving uh, at the thrift store that we were absolutely going to want to shop because this particular thrift store is hands down Gosh. freaking amazing like the stuff that people give up i just oh anyhow um so they brought their wallet we never had to worry about our children having like the terrible twos throw down in the grocery store toy aisle no you want to purchase something you bring your money i don't have any money well maybe next week you're going to work a little bit more right. right so you always have some money in your in your pocket so um, we know, they know when we bring them to the store, don't ask us to buy you this and that and that, this, that, and that, the other thing, yeah. just don't, we do match on larger ticket items. So before you go hating us in the comments, just <laughs> say, I don't think we're too terrible. We do match. Like the boys love to snowboard at our local mountain. Those, um, that's a big example that I use, right? Those fees, um, it's about $300 for annual passes. We we split it and they pay 150 and we pay 150. Um, Ryan is getting ready to gear up here to purchase a season pass for his favorite local um, amusement park in the summer. That's about $225. Yeah. And he's asked for a match, which by the way, I don't know if you know that conversation, but I asked him, are you going to ask for a match on that? And he goes, can I? And I was like, I thought we'd been here. Yeah. <laughs> so if it's about, if it's over a hundred. Yeah. $100, $200. We can can start considering that tj's contemplating uh a new iphone you know those are a couple hundred dollars and he's um considering asking for a match for that so um i think that that and he's been walking around with a pretty old so he's got a six no he has an eight he has an eight so and the screen is completely trashed so it's funny all right so now that that's settled let's talk about the work ethic built by paying for tours so you want to talk about what TJ does now? Yeah, I um, mean, uh, yeah, TJ started doing chores around the house, um, and then uh, I guess it was about four years ago he was looking to earn a little bit more money. So I taught him how to cut our grass, and he cut our grass for a season. And then he's like, you know what? That's something I could do, you know, for actual customers. And um, I remember, you know, his his very first customer was uh, a friend of ours down the street and um he was so proud when he he uh, got got that first mm -hmm. phone call to go cut cut their lawn and um and he was he's growing by demand yeah so, so word, word of mouth, word I, mean, of mouth. And, I mean we do put flyers around the neighborhood um and uh, right around here but mostly it's, it's all uh word of mouth or um his little trailer that he he tows around with him has, yeah. has like a little uh billboard Something on it like, yeah to to say and has his phone number so he's picked up a few customers that have just seen him out cutting lawns and people love seeing young kids work 
They really do. Yeah. And they will go to town on uh, last year. We had to hold TJ back because he's still in school and he goes to school year round because he's finishing high school in three years instead of four. So we have to kind of hold him back in. Hey, listen, like you can't take on like a hundred customers and go to school. So we need to kind of work around that. But, but yeah, I mean, he, he definitely has, has the work ethic to, um, he sets goals and he, he works to meet them. Um, he has other, other goals for saving. Uh, he, he knows what he wants to save for and how much he needs to set aside uh, in the given amount of time until he wants to make that purchase. Mm -hmm. And um, Ryan, like we said, he's four, he's four years younger. So he, he's still learning, but he's, he shows signs of having the work ethic when we know that he has something in mind when all of a sudden he's around the house looking for stuff to do. Yeah. Well, um, and it's on the chore chart. Like if you're saving for something every month, every week that they go to write down their chores, if you're saving for something in particular, it's on the tour chart. And he, they always have something that they're saving for, but you're right. When he, maybe something gets in his head that he wants it, like the season passes are coming up, but he has that and savings already, but like if something's coming up and he's like, okay, how much do I have in, like, how much do I have to work? Like he's right. not, he doesn't love to work at this point, but whereas TJ, I feel like is like, okay, like just recently we had posted that TJ took on painting our powder room down here on the first floor. It needed it. Okay. If you saw our video last week, we were in that new area of the house where there's an addition where my dad would stayed with us until he departed. Um, I, I think they say like entered his relatives in heaven. <laughs> I think it's the appropriate term, but um, that room is like eggshell white. Like it's like very, yeah. very, and it needed to be painted. So and TJ just so happened to be saying, talking about how, gosh, mom, like when I'm done high school in the winter, what am I going to do? Like, I want to do work in the winter, but if it's not snowing, then I can't clear snow and the grass isn't growing. So, and I said, well, you could work on like home repair. He's like, and I said, are you interested in painting? And he said, yes, I'd love to learn to paint. So we gave him that opportunity. That was harder for this one. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, I, uh, I, because I'm not one to let yeah. go of stuff easily. <laughs> so, um, anytime there's been painting to be done in the house, I, I've allowed them to help with it. But, but you're a total micromanager, <laughs> total, and it's fair because that's what you do. That's what we do for work, right? We're micro. We have to micromanage sometimes because we're project managers. <laughs> And some people, if you don't micromanage them, things don't get done. Um, but TJ watched YouTube videos, created the list of supplies that he needed. And I made it very clear that this is what we were going to do. This is your job. You're going to learn about it. You're going to take on this task. We're going to go to the store and get you what you need. I'll pay for it, of course. And um, But I need a budget. I need to know that you know what you're doing. And he did it. And he did a beautiful job. You posted pictures on that at some point. Maybe I should have him do like a walk around on video about what he did and how he did it and blah, blah, blah for, for people. But anywho, it was a really good experience for him. And now he wants to take on a couple additional rooms in the house. And once he's really comfortable, I think he already has customers lining up for that service. So you teach your children to work. They will want for nothing. Just, I mean, obviously you have to teach them how to give save spend right appropriately and they will want for nothing um okay so we talked about that so wrapping up this know that you have the power as parents and the responsibility the schools don't teach children about money i'm sorry hands down i tj's homeschooled and i had a runabout with one of his teachers because he told me that he stood up in class online of course virtually when they were telling and push when they were pushing debt they were pushing students that if you don't have money to pay for college, your next best option is to take out loans. I absolutely, without a doubt, and I was so proud of TJ because he was like, I might get in trouble for this, but I just said, I got, I got the question wrong because he did not say that you have to, I don't know what he said, but he's like, I'm not answering that you would take out loans. He picked the option of uh, working your way through and- yep. And then he went back to his teacher when he got it wrong and said, I want my point back. 
she gave him his point back, but she told him, continued to tell him that he was still wrong. Yeah. So even teachers don't realize that you don't have to live a life in debt. Did you know that teachers are on the, the top 10 list of baby step millionaires at Ramsey? Yeah, I remember you showed me. So, for that. Educators, get yourself educated. Get out of debt and stop teaching kids to take out student loans. Stop it. Knock it off. Okay. Sorry. Got to get over that. I get a little passionate about that. <laughs> Makes me so angry because I feel like you're just selling them into a system of being workers and just taking on debt. And then the life of debt, being a slave to the lender it's just soul sucking. Soul yeah, so soul much, sucking. so much freeing once uh, once you, you paid off that the other debt. side. And then getting to millionaire status is not that far behind, right. because once you've learned to manage those skills. So anyhow, as parents, you have the power and the responsibility to teach your children about money. And as parents, also, I want to say we tend to want to give our children everything they want, right? Don't we? Am I the only one that doesn't? We want to give to them. <laughs> you know, we do. We want to be generous to them. And I know for me personally, having grown up with relatively a lot less than we have now, right? You want to give them the things that they want. But I'm here to tell you, if you just give it to them, that's not teaching them anything. Right. That's that's selling them into an entitlement mindset, unfortunately. So really, it is a disservice to them if you just buy them whatever they want. There, I said it. I might get a lot of hate for that. <laughs> so instead of giving them a fish. Teach them to fish. Excellent. Everything, if you, instead of giving them everything they want. Teach them how to work for what they want. How to work for it and how to save for it. Because guess what? They save their hard-earned money. All of a sudden, they might not want that. How many times have we seen that? Yeah. Time and time again. I was saving for this. But you know what? That's not worth it. Do you have a good example of anything recently? Not recently. Just can't think many of times where it's like, no, that's not worth it. Or my favorite is the times that they're like, you know, I think I want to go get a burger or I want to go to Wawa and get a smoothie. And it, this hasn't happened recently. This was a couple of times ago. And I would get, I would say, okay, go get your wallet. Never mind. <laughs> right. That's what we would get. Never mind. So anyhow. Instead of giving them everything they want, help them to work for it, to earn and to save and to pay for it. It's the most empowering thing you can do for your children when it comes to money. Lastly, I want you to know people are watching. People are watching how you parent. And sometimes this makes me very nervous because I'm a very like, my parenting style is very much like lots of love, lots of mercy, lots of grace until you get to that edge where I'm just like going to let you like have a come to Jesus moment. So. How you parent other people say raising our kiddos the way that we have and this is mostly you so i'm going to give you tons of credit here because you're just such an awesome dad um other people comment on how kind and polite and well-mannered our children are and that's not a coincidence this one in particular for a very long time you wouldn't give them anything unless they said please right. and then if they didn't say thank you i would take it back you know like very for, forever that was years. I feel yeah. like that, that you even taught my dad how to say please and thank you, which is awesome. Um, but that's not a coincidence. So setting them up for success with money also falls into line with good, having the good manner right. and good mannerisms. And I mean, we've even seen that with TJ and his friends. I mean, TJ talks about money with his friends and now some of them, uh, he tells us are, are picking up on the budgeting and, uh, scrutinizing uh you know one example is going to the movies they're they're planning to go out to see a movie later this weekend mm -hmm. and his friends would typically in the past have gone to the amc or the regal ticket the, places the expensive movie theater. 15 dollar a ticket places like hello but the last time they went went to the movies as a group tj said you know what it's playing at this theater that's near us mm -hmm. that is a single screen old fashioned type theater where you can get in for, I think it's uh, $5, $5 for the matinee, $7 okay. for the evening show. Is, is it really? I thought it was five for the evening show. Did it go up? Oh, okay. Maybe I have it backwards. Maybe, maybe it's four, three or four, maybe it's four five. Matinee and five for the evening show. Either, either way, the Watch four of us, the yeah, the four of us can go to the movie, get our tickets, get popcorn, sodas and a snack 
and it's about twenty five dollars. Yeah, for four of us to go see a movie, and for some theaters, that's just the price of the ticket. Yeah, yeah. So, so TJ has shared that with his friends. Um, the last time they went out to see a movie together, and now that's the their go to. They yeah. they'll wait to see the movie that they want when it's coming out at that theater. And that's exactly it. It's not about being so tight with money that you're not willing to go have fun. You can absolutely have fun and you can do it at a much less, much, much spending, much less money. Right. And I think that that's the key. So you have, we all have limited dollars. Okay. Most of us in this world have very limited resources when it comes to money. We weren't born with a silver spoon in our hand, but you want to think and be intentional with how you spend your money and go spend it, but spend it wisely, spend it wisely so that you can give generously and I don't know. So I just think that's great. Okay, folks, anything else? That's it for me. So that's a wrap. We hope that we have encouraged you to at least consider paying your kiddos for tours and to most certainly teach them about basic money principles. Thank you for joining us and have a great day. Bye, everyone.